Okay, let's have a look at the green hive and see if they're doing as well. Remember, these, um, this colony was not really as heavy. I think the yellow hive had um, six more pounds relative to this at the start of here, so pretty close, really. Let's see. So that's full of bees. Okay, let's just have a look at what this super is like. Um, so a frame out of the middle is totally capped, ready to go. Even to this outside here. That one's, well that side's totally capped, that's close to half. And then how about right to the outside wall here. Sort of still some work to do. That side's filled with honey but, but not capped. And that side, they can still put some more honey away in there. But it's pretty close anyway. This box, in my opinion, is sort of 80% full. Our second box. Looks not quite as full. If I go right into the middle here, what's this frame? Three quarters capped, half capped on that side. But right beside it, there's a frame that with lots of open. We're still doing a lot of work there. But then beside that, there's a frame that's mostly capped. So, well, not mostly. But really, there's still lots of honey in all of these frames and not a lot of space left for the bees to be storing. So I would call that sort of two thirds to three quarters full. And then our bottom super, the newest one. Has a lot of bees working in it. It's a lot of honey, but not capped yet. Yeah, sort of every frame looks like that. <clears throat> and here's a frame, didn't have a lot of wax. So that side's good. This side was right down to the foundation in a couple spots. So they're just working on building that up now, which is good. But really this, this box is sort of close to half full, maybe 40% full. So, I'm just gonna do the same thing and give this colony two supers. And they may not fill those two supers over the next two weeks, but that still puts us only, you know, not even to the middle of July. Um, so I'm not at all worried that the bees will use that space at some point. And I think I'll likely be able to do the same thing, take away those top two supers within the next couple of weeks. Not that I normally do that. It's early, that would be early in the season for me to be removing, to be harvesting honey. But we'll see how things go. Okay, I think I'm just gonna go through the same routine through this colony, um, just in case there are any swarm cells. I'm just gonna find this queen and take a good look at everything um, because I just wanna make sure over the next period, there's no risk of these colonies swarming and really, if you've just got a couple hives in your backyard, um, I think you may as well be doing this on a scheduled basis anyway. Someone had commented that maybe um, there wasn't enough room for the queen to lay in these colonies, and, and uh, that hive, I, I don't think that's the case at all with. This hive here actually does still have two, the outside frame and this frame, are largely stored with nectar and honey. There's some empty space in the middle there, but um, what I could actually do is maybe remove this frame completely from the brood chamber. And in that case, I would just put it into a split. I actually did that early in the season already with this hive because they had so much leftover winter stores that stayed in this brood chamber. So I could do that again today. Okay, so I've got the queen in this colony as well. She's there marked yellow. I'll just show you a close-up of her. 
Okay, I wanted to show you this again. This, actually this frame I had a picture of earlier, I put it up on Instagram, but this is uh, the very outside frame in this colony. You can see that side is, you know, 95% covered in pollen. Um, even the side that faces out, there's quite a bit of honey stored, but it's still probably 50% or more pollen as well. So that's great. However, as a whole, this colony really isn't using their space as efficiently as that colony. Um, well, this frame, there's honey like a rainbow and the queen has laid eggs all in the middle. This side, there's brood and pollen in the middle. But there's some other frames. So there's just some other frames where the brood pattern isn't really that impressive. And it's sort of spotted in the brood pattern with, um, with honey in there as well, or nectar that I'm sure they will move up, but they're putting quite a bit of it there. Yeah, so it's frames like this where overall the brood pattern isn't bad and the queen has laid eggs in some of this space, but there's also some pollen stored in that empty space. And they're putting some nectar in some of these empty holes here. Um, and overall, yeah, it's just in the end not gonna give you as much brood rearing on one frame. Yeah, and even a frame like this that was right in the middle of the brood chamber. So there's just not a lot of capped brood. There is some younger brood, but a lot of pollen, um, a lot of pollen dotting in the centers. And this side here, it's pollen here. They're letting the queen lay in sort of a weird L-shaped. And the brood pattern just isn't as nice as you'd like to see. There's really nothing wrong with it, uh, but it's not, not ideal and not really that efficient. Okay, here's what I decided to do after looking through that brood chamber. Um, I actually just shook the bees off and I'm going to remove this frame here that is almost entirely honey. Um, and it's, I think, a bunch of older stuff and, and some new honey coming in. Um, actually, this frame is sort of older as well. They're making a lot of drone brood sized cells here in the middle. Um, and yeah, that one I'm going to remove from this colony. I'll probably add it to like the outside of a, of a new split that I make to give them some resources. And I'm going to replace it with one of these, which is um, honey comb from years past that I've extracted and it's drawn out nicely and it's nice new clean wax. And I'm actually just going to drop that right in the center of this brood chamber because there was still a good you know, seven frames with brood on them in the middle, and I'm gonna put that right in the middle. So hopefully, hopefully the queen uh, right away decides to lay that with a nice full brood pattern. I'm a little worried that they're gonna fill it with honey, but I'm also gonna be adding honey supers right here so that hopefully they leave that for the queen or the queen makes sure that they leave it for them. And maybe we'll check on that next time I'm in. And I also think, yeah, adding that completely empty frame right in the middle of this colony that they can use right away is um, maybe going to take away some of that swarming tendency that they seem to be having right now. So both these colonies did show some cells um, with larva in them. I still haven't seen any of these colonies make a fully capped swarm cell, which they would be capable of in 10 days, but I haven't seen that in these colonies yet. Um, so that's good, things could be worse, but I still don't like the fact that they are showing that um, this one I think three times this season and that one two, definitely twice, maybe three times as well. Okay, 
five supers total, two brand new. So these always look impressive stacked up real high, but just keep in mind about half of this honey super space is unused yet, uh, but hopefully they fill it up quick. Okay, here's the back of our scales and they've probably come up probably about 25 pounds with those two empty supers. So let's see, our yellow hive now is 193 and our green hive now so our green hive now is 189 um, so those empty supers might have been a bit heavier um, but that's all right so now that we're into peak honey flow i'm going to try to um, make sure that I weigh these a little more often, like as, as often as possible, do it daily. I know I missed a whole bunch there. I was away and uh, sort of left these guys probably longer than I should have. Um, so thanks for watching. Probably in the next week or two, I'll be checking mite levels again and uh, keeping track of how much honey is coming into these colonies because hopefully it's the best time of year.